Hello everyone, let's move on to the ninth lecture of thermodynamics where the topic which is going to be discussed is proof of internal energy to be a state function. We are continuously saying that W and Q that means work and heat are path functions whereas internal energy is state function and we have in our previous lectures proved that W is a path function. But we have to still prove that u is a state function as well as q is a path function. So right now turn for u to be proved as a state function. So in this regard we have to choose such a way that first of all we have to produce some energy without doing work. And it would contradict the first law of thermodynamics because actually this type of machine is perpetual motion of first kind and from the previous lecture as you have known come to know that this type of machine in reality is not possible and this way we will come to a conclusion that u is a is a state function it, it is not path dependent function okay so let us assume that a system is changing with respect to pressure as well as volume so the diagram should be a PV diagram in the V axis in the X axis you are plotting the volume V and in the Y axis you are plotting the pressure P and the temperature is constant. So the two states one is the X and another is the Y state okay suppose P1 V1 pressure volume of the X state and P2 V2 uh, the Y state for the Y state okay and let us suppose that UX and UY are the internal energies of the system in the respective states x and y respectively okay hence the if the system is changing from x to y okay first of all it was in the initial state x and secondly it has gone to the final state y then what should be the change in internal energy the change in internal energy should be u y minus u x which is actually delta u now let us assume that the system changes from state x to state y by following path 1. Okay, that is very important. That this change which is taking place here is following path 1. It's a particular path. Okay, we have to um, force internal energy to be path dependent first of all. Okay, so let us choose an arbitrary path which is path 1. And this way we are taking note of its change which is to be equal to be delta u is that clear okay now suppose that by using another path path 2 okay the same change of state is brought and energy change as associated with this is delta u prime okay that means the system is now coming back to the initial state x but it is taking a different path it is path 2 okay and in this regard the change in internal energy associated should be delta u prime and since we are just making internal energy we are forcing internal energy to be path dependent so we are again assuming that these two change changes in internal energies are not equal and as for our assumption let us say that delta u is greater than delta u prime okay so we are assuming that delta u is greater than delta u prime so this is position x this is the initial position this is position y this is the final position okay so the internal energy of the x position is ux internal energy of the y position is ui so the, taking the following the path one it is coming to x from x to y and the internal energy change is delta u while from y to x you are coming back following path 2 where the internal energy change was delta u prime and we are forcing internal energy to become path dependent so that delta u is greater than delta u dash first of all delta u and delta u prime are not equal so that delta u is greater than delta u prime okay so x to y path 1 y to x path 2 and this figure you have to follow where we are uh, plotting v in the x-axis and p in the y-axis okay. the system will come back to its initial state as i've said and at the same time the energy which is used 
uh, will be available which is equal to delta u minus delta u that means what that means you are going starting your journey from x to y and again returning back from y to x but you are following a cycle which cycle now at the time of going you were choosing path 1 and at the time of coming back you choose path 2 so you choose you have chosen two different paths and in this regard you are uh, you are just having internal energy change two types of internal energy change which are not equal and since one is greater than another one so their difference should have some value and that value is delta u minus delta u prime that means you are producing some energy here isn't it so this is some trick by which you can produce a little energy so you have to repeat this cycle okay x to y y to x x to y y to x this way by repeating the same cycle again and again continuous energy will be generated and perpetual motion will become possible is that possible no this is contradiction to the first law of thermodynamics and what does the law state the law states that the energy can neither be created nor destroyed hence delta u minus delta u dash this is actually zero that means delta u and delta u dash or delta u prime are equal okay hence the change of energy is accompanied as a function of initial and final states of the system only and it is independent of the path that means just it is depending on the initial and final state only and it is path independent it, since it is a path independent function therefore you can conclude that is a it is a state function that is it does not matter how the change is brought about therefore internal energy u is a state function okay so so many statements and clauses are written in in this uh, few slides so just pause the video and take the note okay and that's all for this proof thank you have a nice day